Hello listening people. Greetings humans. You are listening to Spin Polish Presents Unappreciated Masterpieces. Yeah. I'm Ryan Slowinski. And I'm Bartek. His first name is Bar and his last name is Te. No, my first name is Bar and my last name is Tek. Good. That's great. You know, and in case you guys are sitting there going, what's happening? Why are these guys called Spit and Polish? It's it's likingly because we're always spitting, and we both happen to be Polish. Isn't that right, Bartek? Fun fact, we have not spit once while recording this entire show. No. We just dress very, very nicely. We, we spit when we're not recording We're, we're spitting young gentlemen. Yeah. So, Bartek, <clears throat> what do we do on uh, our show? What do we do here? What do we present on our Appreciate Masterpieces? I could explain it, but can I do it, can I do it in metaphor? Obviously, yes. Thank for, you. For first-time listeners who may find the concept hard to grasp, metaphors will perfectly suffice. This is a perfect metaphor that we can all relate to. Now, Ryan, you've you ha- you've had a history. You've grown up. You were a child once. Have you ever looked through uh, old belongings and found something from your childhood that you recognize? Like, yeah. This, this right here, great memories, great nostalgia. You yeah. felt that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. doing the same thing again. Child had a history, looking through old things. You ever found something that you didn't recognize, but you could believe that you had a history with this thing once? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That. <laughs> That's the show. <laughs> that was the worst metaphor ever. <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere. That, no. that's, it, that's it. He went. He went to no. Look, unappreciated masterpieces. It's where you got the movies that existed in the past. You may have heard of them. You may have seen them. Maybe you didn't, but you can believe that they once existed and that they still exist because well, they're right there and it says the date on the back of the box or in the credits or something. We're finding those movies that are great but not remembered, but need to be remembered. So here on the show, we do a commentary of them. Yeah, and hey, some of them you do remember, but they're just not loved. They need a love that we need to give them. They need this love because, hey, people put time, effort into this film or project. Someone wrote it, then someone directed it, someone financed it, and then eventually people acted in it, and guess what? Thousands upon thousands of people went out of their way they spent an hour and a half two hours however long to travel out to the cinema and go see this or they bought the dvd or this that and the rest and we need to honor all those people who have put moments of their lives into these movies these movies that we the general public just don't acknowledge and don't appreciate yeah take them out of your old toy box yeah, see, now your metaphor's working. You've expanded upon it. I'm well, very proud of you. Well, because I thought that you'd understand it, Mr. Genius. I understood. So, Bartek, yeah. what is the uh, old toy that we're grabbing out today? It's a fucking movie, dude. Okay, what, what's, what's the uh, movie we're grabbing out today? <laughs> the movie we're watching today is Rocky e Kosh Super Ktosh. <sighs> ah... Look, this is embarrassing. I said we are both Polish, but I do not speak Polish, so I don't understand what... I, I, you know, I believe you're speaking Polish. Are you speaking Polish, then? Yep. I, look, I just don't understand what you said. Well, this is another weird one, because obviously they didn't localize Rocky, but Bullwinkle they had to. The movie is The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. That's the title, right? Yeah. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle? Yeah. But... The 2000 classic. Yep. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle about the adventures... Of Bullwinkle and Rocky. Yeah, just the one, but you know, a lot of things <laughs> happen in it. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Yeah, the adventure of Bullwinkle and this, Rocky. This is another one with a Polish title. They, the one thing they, apart from and, the one thing they localized was Bullwinkle's name because, you know, it was just such an exclusively English name. Yeah, yeah. No. Kosh Super Ktosh roughly translates to Moose Someone Super. So what was the adventures? Is that normal? Not there at all. Just Rocky e Kosh Super Ktosh. Ah, so they they don't venture in Poland, I imagine. But Bartek, On the that is the classic movie we're doing today. But we need a classic guest, someone who's been on this show before, a hero. Three times. Three Some, times. Once, twice, three times. Or who? Man. It's a man. 
good. We're gonna, we're gonna eventually, eventually, it's like the 20 questions. Who is the guest? Who is it? Don't read the description, guys. Okay, Ryan, 20 questions. Ask them. No. <laughs> Should I ask them? Who's our guest? 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 And go on, sir. Does he have a will? I don't know. You tell me. I thought it was 20 questions. I'm not playing 20 questions with you. Does Special it? guest Will Brooks, does he have a will? Does he? Yes. Oh, and it is the mighty man himself. The, 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 the glue that keeps us together in life. I already said his name. It's Will Brooks. The Will Man. The Willster, the Brookster, the Will of a uh, group is finally here. Will Brooks, how are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. And you watched The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle? Yes. We all sat down and watched The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, and we are here to do a feature-length commentary for you about the wonder, the joy, the beauty of Rocky and Bullwinkle and their adventures. Right, look, you said something, dude. I just want to establish, we didn't watch it together. We're not, no, no, We're not no. those kind of people. We watched them separately. But together in, in spirit. I watched it twice. He watched it twice. I, I watched put it in the once. hours. He put hours in. I put a bit of time in. So get your copy of Rocky and Bullwinkle together. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, the 2000 classic, with you know everyone, everyone, everyone's in it. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like literally yesterday when we were talking, Will said something like, "I was surprised that." I don't such know, and such, such and such were in it. And I'm like, Will, you can blank out the names <laughs> put and put anything there. there. <laughs> so get your copy ready, because we're going to start this magnificent piece of art. Can I say two? No. One? No. Get ready, guys, because we're going to start this in three, two, one, play. Yeah, I said two. whoop de doo So... The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Now, we've got a DVD copy here, which is amazing. And on the front cover, it just says above the, the font, it has a picture of the three villains of the film. Uh, the Fearless Leader. Um, um, what was her name again? Natasha. Natasha. Natasha Fatal. Natasha Fatal and... Um, Boris Badenov. Boris Badenov. And it just says the three actors' last names, De Niro, Russo, Alexander. And it just has the font too close together, so it just looks like one person's name. Like, oh yes, remember that classic De Niro, Russo, Alexander? We all know De Niro, Russo, Wasn't Alexander. Wasn't that person president? President De Niro, Russo, Alexander? They were a fearless leader, that's to say. So, we are here to talk about this classic. So, what's our history of this movie, guys? Well, Ryan, you go last. I'll go first. And will you go somewhere in the middle? You can go For second, maybe. You can you can go <laughs> two. This time you can go two. Oh, I can go two. Yes. So with me, um, I think I caught the end of this movie once <laughs> because the only thing I distinctly remember from it was Bullwinkle talking to an overly serious man, which does indeed happen towards the end of the movie, just before he goes to surf the web. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. But otherwise, I watched the cartoon a little bit when I was a kid. Not that I was a kid in the 60s, guys. No, it was my the parents, reruns. My parents were born at the end of the 60s. Yeah, the reruns. They were on Cartoon Network about last decade-ish. And um, I remembered... The only things I remember from it are... There was one episode where Bullwinkle was like really struggling to say a nursery rhyme that basically amounted to pick up a pin and you'll get good luck. Woo! It was like, see a pin, pick it up, and all day long you'll have good luck. And, um, and there's like a weird intermission thing, which we can talk about later. Um, number two, you can go now, please. Well, I did see the cartoon show a bit when I was younger, but I actually have absolutely zero history with this film. <laughs> Ryan told me the other day, Will, the adventures of Rocky and Fun Bullwinkle. fact, Will was there for the 1960s <laughs> version, for he is yes. timeless. <laughs> So Always you didn't here. see, you didn't see, you didn't know anything about the movie before I said, hey, The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle? Yes, yes, and it's a surprise <laughs> all the way through. <laughs> That's the best. See, that, put that on the box. <laughs> it was a surprise all the way through. Oh, fun fact, on the box, it just says, witty, funny, clever, and hip, CBS TV. <laughs> A TV station reviewed the movie <laughs> that was released in cinemas. Yeah. If there's one thing, if there's one group of people I trust to know what's here, did CBS. <laughs> did, did they used to air the show or yeah. something? 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so my my one is the most controversial uh, history Be- best of this for movie. Last, that's why I, I saw it. this in the cinema. I oh, saw this geez. movie, and I had never seen. <laughs> so I'm still laughing about Will. I've never seen the cartoon show. I've never watched a single episode. I know characters are offshoots from that, like. What was it Peabody and Mr. Sherman or whatever it is and and uh, you know I know of these characters but I never saw the actual show uh, so I saw the movie when it came out in 2000 so I was uh, um, seven <laughs> I was seven years old at yep. the time my parents took me to see this movie because they knew Rocky and Bullwinkle obviously and they're like oh it's a new hip version for the new hip crowd gotta take my hip kid to it and um I this is the first movie, uh, I think w- one of the few movies I actually walked out of the cinema of, and I was As a seven year old. Year old <laughs> I actually said to my mum and dad, and I remember this, I didn't say it in a bratty way, and they can back me up. I said it in a really civilized manner. As a seven year old version of myself, I said, Mom, Dad, can we please go home? I really don't like this movie. And they were like, oh, Ryan, come on, come on, just just a little while longer. And I'm just like, no, I'm I'm fine. Can we just go home? And they took me home. <laughs> Do you remember where you were in the movie? Um, I knew by that point that they had already flown a plane. Oh, so that's pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty late in the movie. But I remember hating it every other moment. <laughs> So I saw this movie as a seven-year-old and said, not for me. And I knew that as a seven-year-old that maybe in over 10 years time, you know, in like 16 years time, I would come back to this movie and I would really enjoy it. And did I? Well, I'm here talking about it. So does that mean yes? The show is called Unappreciated Masterpieces. There's only been one episode where we didn't like the movie. So, So this is the classic scene in which... She, Mini Mogul, who's in two scenes, a fun fact, mm-hmm. uh, she rips out our main evil characters, who, who are played brilliantly, might I add, by Jason Alexander, who, for a fact, was in it for the money. Isn't that right, Well, Yes, yes. He yep. has stated, I did this for the money. Purely for the money. Purely. Guys. Robert De Niro, the Oscar winner a- actor and the best actor of his generation and living today, who said he did it strictly for the money. And um, Rene Russo, who is a great actress, and she has not said that she was in it for the money. So she was there, in it for the art. She, there you go. She was in it for the merit of the piece. <laughs> <laughs> As we speak, the merit of the piece is Minnie Mogul cartoonishly <laughs> ripping in half a contract and throwing it on the table. So... I had never seen the cartoon, guys. So this movie, and I still haven't. I still haven't. Uh, this is the clo- This is the only Rocky and Bullwinkle content I've ever gotten. Is this? How does that make you feel, guys? Do you think I'm missing out, or do you think this gives in all you need? Well, Will doesn't remember the cartoon. Right? I only remember the show incredibly dimly, so I can't answer your question. Well, but you, I'll cartoon. say this movie is all you need period in your life really yeah it's, it's, it's an artistic merit ryan take that pin and stick it up your ass oh wow and all day long we'll have and here's luck. karen sympathy who reminds us that the early 2000s had a fashion and that fashion was awful dude i thought she was a boy the first time i, saw I also thought that she was uh sandra bullock for a good majority of this movie <laughs> i was like ah, sandra bullock's in this movie Good for her! See, my first thought was, what the hell is Macaulay Culkin doing these days? <laughs> he owes us a favour, yeah. So, um, Randy Quaid is in this movie, and you think that, like, I thought he was going to be in the movie a lot, because I looked at IMDb before watching the movie to see who was in it, to refresh my memory, and one of the first people listed is Randy Quaid. And I'm like, oh, Randy Quaid's going to be in this, like, a fair bit. And he's in the first 20 minutes a fair bit, and then we just never see him again until, like, the very end of the movie. And you're like, oh, yeah, Randy Quaid was in this. And here's the best way to describe Rocky, the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. It has Randy Quaid. You can't, you can't say that about Rocky itself. You can only say that about Rocky and Bullwinkle. You know, this movie would have been increased in value if the fearless leader was played by Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine that movie? 
in which he's just like, yeah. And he's doing an accent as well. So he's like, yeah, yeah. I feel less liver. You have to include more Vs in there. I have the feel as liver. <laughs> exactly. And here we have John Polito, who only just recently passed away. So that's, that's an unfortunate thing. But see... He was a great actor. He was in The Big Lebowski. Dude, are you gonna point out every single Miller's celebrity? Crossing. <laughs> yeah. Because if be you are, that's busy. that's gonna be the whole episode. Will's not gonna get to talk, and neither am I. Uh, here's the president. He's played by that white guy that you always see in movies, but you never know his name. But he's always white haired, and he's been like that since like the '90s. So is he Steve Martin in disguise? Who knows? You know, but what I was saying was John Polito, he, he's a great actor. He recently just passed away, and I think it's important that we uh, point out that this film is a part of his body of work, and even though he is gone, we can look back to this movie, especially this one scene that he is in, and remember the legacy that he's left behind. Did he do it for the money? No, I think uh, no, he did it for the working for a mole. <laughs> this is the part of the movie that makes no... Like, okay... They make a comment, don't they, Will? Yes. That the thin line between cartoon and reality... There's a thin line between a cartoon and reality. And this movie, in the reality world, can get pretty cartoony. But we never see any, like, anthropomorphic characters in this movie ever again, other than our main characters. Like, we never see, like, Poochie down the road. Like, this is the only time we see a... a, a, a like... The mole. Well, when the... The mole raises questions. Is he from a cartoon show that's just come well, out? Well, we forgot to mention the the CDI gets that weasel guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's true. But also, even the movie... Here's the problem. I don't know if Roger Ebert did a review of this. He did. Did he love it? He gave he it thumbs it. up. It's <laughs> yeah. on the dude, back dude, of the he could not. He could not... Stop talking about how fun this movie was. And, ah. like, in the video, the other guy that he was doing it with, he didn't like it, and Roger told him that he was wrong, that this movie's a lot of fun, and that Robert De Niro had every single right to, to like, reference Taxi Driver. Did he? Because it was his turn. And he said that in the written review as well. Good. Roger Ebert, you, 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 you're clearing your name in my book of villains. Roger was a good boy for this movie. Uh, but... He knows <laughs> what was up. What I'm saying is, like, you can't Rather critique knew. the movie for its faults because they're on purpose. You see, you know, the goof section exists on IMDb, and there's reviews that we'll get to later, and there were negative ones. And here's the thing, you, can, you can't, this is one of those rare examples of any movie, but especially ones that we've had on this show. We've had lots of crazy movies on the show, we've had lots of wacky zany movies, but this is probably the most crazy movie since Monkey Bone. Right? I'd put this above Monkey Bone. Oh, no, no. It's above, but it's, like, yeah. as crazy, but yeah, in a different yeah. vein of crazy. Yeah. So, Monkey Bone, also about cartoon and real life. This is cartoons mixing with reality. And it's so crazy, so on point with live-action cartoon, that you can't critique it for its fault. It's like critiquing a Looney Tunes episode. Yeah, it, You it's... can't do it. You can't say, oh, this Looney Tunes episode... I give it one star because it was too blah 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 because all the reviews are this is too crazy this is too like they fold it for being too silly too over the top too this and that you can't because it's basically just a cartoon but with real people yeah like monkey bone was a crazy character and that made everything crazy because he was doing crazy things mm. here it's kind of real people in just a crazy world yeah. and this movie is very clever because when it said that they were going to give the movie a green light i saw it coming that oh there's going to be an actual green light i didn't expect there to be a whole green lighthouse well here's something i felt very silly i i wrote in my notes i <laughs> should you know i wrote in my notes huh i didn't expect this movie to make a Great Gatsby reference because like the the, the green the green flashing light. <laughs> I was like, oh. ah, this movie is really appealing to the academics out there. Good for for the literacy people. Good job. And then they're like, oh, we're green lit. And I'm like, oh, okay. Also, for as crazy as this movie is, the main characters are barely in it. Kind of normal. I mean, Bollywood's dumb, but they're kind of normalish. Oh yeah, that's. That's kind of it, but then they're always pursued by crazy people. It's like that with most old cartoons, where it's like, if you really go back Rocco's Modern Life, Rocco's not crazy, but everyone else is. Mm. And Heffa's just dumb. 
but everyone else is crazy. All the villains are crazy. Like, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Big Head are crazy. And, and same with, like, Cat Dog. Cat Dog. Cat and Dog aren't that crazy. But everyone else in their life is crazy. Dog's kind of crazy. He's dumb. He's dumb, but kind of crazy. No, yeah, but you know, I mean, like... Mostly dumb. Mostly dog. Mostly dog. Half cat. <laughs> so, cat dog. what do we think of Karen's sympathy? Who is I the thought you were going to say, what do we think of cat dog? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of cat is dog? Is there a cat dog live action movie? I would hope not. <laughs> I think that'll be coming in a few years down the road, Martin. They better not use CGI. That is made by David Cronenberg. <laughs> it's just going to be like, and Jeff Goldblum's going to be dog. And it's just going to be the greatest thing. Oh, who would play cat in the live action? Okay, Jeff Goldblum has to be dog. Can you imagine dog being Jeff Goldblum? But he's like, you know, because he's like got physically fit for the fly. He would just be like, this is dog. Uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, I'm a, a, a dog. So, Cat would obviously be... Like, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle would... You know what's sad thing is? Dave Chappelle would actually be pretty good as Cat. I can actually see him as Cat. You're joking around, but I think that's a really good casting choice. That's actually really... Or, or Terry Crews as Dog and Dave Chappelle as Cat. Bam, Just, you got a movie right there. Green light that one! <laughs> Great get Is that the sound the green lighthouse makes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the noise. <laughs> all, have you always noticed in movies and TV shows, lighthouses make noises when the light flings past the person? Like, like the light itself goes... Like, why? The light it's, doesn't it's a, make noise. It's a noise. heavy light. It, yeah. It's it a really, really heavy light. It cuts through the wind. Yeah. <laughs> Well, whenever I po- whenever I point at something, an air like jet noise happens. Yeah, but just you're to not it. you're not light. <laughs> oh yeah, light's very quiet. I am light. I have often thought that Will Brooks does not sleep. He just hovers in the air into a bowl of energy. So look, we can't be too chaotic here. Ryan asked the question, "What do we think of Karen's sympathy?" Yeah, what do you think of Karen and her sympathy for the devil? She's. For basically the main character of the movie, she's very deep. She's, she's got, got a child in her. That's how deep she is. Isn't that just one of the most artistic things, though? Because you've heard that saying, like, you're in a child. This movie takes that literally and explores what it, it actually means. Because usually when it's said, it's just like, oh, yeah, you, when you were, like, naive or when you could enjoy things. But this one is literally having it talk throughout the whole movie giving its little take on things and also tripping and it's also very other people have been children too it's very literal when she trips there's like a squishing noise she's <laughs> actually in the eye <laughs> <laughs> only one other person has the inner child and you can you connect the two and you realise at the end oh they were made to be and they're both blonde and they're both in this movie wouldn't that be weird if the if the fearless leader had an inner child, but it's in his <laughs> monocle eye? <laughs> Which he only wears, like, for one or two scenes in this film. Oh, yeah, and then he wears, like, two little glass Because it's things. for the hypno-vision thing. He's going to be safe from hypno... He should have just had two protective monocles, really. Oh, he kind of does it. Bifocals. So are you no, saying that if, right. if he was a Pokemon trainer, he'd use hypno? Mm-hmm. He'd use ditto as well. Oh, but only against Hypno, so he can have another Hypno? Mm-hmm. Ah. He's a sneaky... And he'd also use it to mimic himself, so that way there's more fearless leaders to me. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just massive scenes so of Robert well, De Niro talking to himself. So <laughs> well, well, can we not time? skip over the fact that... Uh, well, you don't remember the TV show guys that much, do you? But was Bullwinkle a fan of hip-hop? Well, I mean, he's not. establishing right <laughs> now that hip hop isn't in Frostbite Falls. Yeah. Oh, oh what well, is that true? Ooh. So, if they made Rocky and Bullwinkle today, would Bullwinkle be like a wise cracking hip hop fan, and and Rocky would be like the liberal white guy who's like, oh, again with the Eminem, and he like flicks his paper <laughs> again with the Eminem. Is Rocky supposed to be a boy? Yes. Can't Rocky. you tell by his manly name? <laughs> I couldn't tell by his manly voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we have the greatest actor ever, Which Jason one? Alexander. <laughs> you know what? I didn't know it was him. <laughs> Until he took off his hat. No. 
not even what there. What tipped you in? <laughs> when the mattress salesman was there, I'm like, <laughs> you mean Billy Crystal? Yeah, I'm like, who is this mattress salesman? And then that, and then when I was looking up who he was, I found out Jason Alexander was in the movie. I'm like, who is Jason Alexander? And he's like, Boris Badenov. I'm like, oh, I see it. Well, I, and then when he took off his hat, I'm like, of course. My favourite part of that is you didn't know who Billy Crystal was. I was stuck between <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried and Billy Crystal, <laughs> and I needed to confirm. And then in the middle is this Wallace Shawn. Who's he? He's, um... You ever seen The Princess Bride? Maybe, but probably not. It's also got Billy Crystal in it, surprisingly. I'll Wallace Shawn's that bold guy who also has a very similar Gilbert Gottfried voice. He's in, like, My Favourite Martian as well, and... Uh, He's in Princess Bride, and he's, like, the Sicilian, and he's just, like, INCONCEIVABLE! He's great. He's, like, Gilbert Gottfried's love child, basically, but bold. Just by himself? So, he, his love child with Jason Alexander, then? Exactly. Hold on, shit, guys. Look, aboard everything, we need to talk about three spies and a horse who is also a spy. <laughs> Their horse who is also a spy. Do go on. That this this entire section with three spies and a horse that is also a spy, this feels like the most Ryan thing I've seen in quite some time. <laughs> something I would come up with. Yeah, this this if feels I was a TV or something executive. That, or something that you would watch. Oh, like, I'd watch the fuck out of this show. Yeah, yeah. I would too, but like y I think you identify But it needs more aliens involved somehow. <laughs> Your favourite Martian. Well we only see a little bit of I'm sure there's some aliens off screen. Here's the thing. If this is like, here's the thing. I, da they're dancing. This is, the, <laughs> this is the part that confused me the most in the entire movie. In the entire movie, this is the part that confused me because it's not even like a song that's from their country or something that matches their ideals. It's evil Western music that they're just like, let's lose our shit. And it keeps going for like a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and like with everything in this movie, it's interrupted by a fax. That's like the best part. You know, <laughs> like, I know everything hinges. I am... <laughs> everything hinges on fax messages. Is that is that true? Because I only remember the one. Fax. It's, it's okay, okay. To the so plot. It just interrupted then with a fax message. Then when they get in the car later, they get interrupted by a fax. Like they're that's talking, what I remember. They interrupt get fax message, and then at the end, Bullwinkle himself is faxed <laughs> over to the bad guys and stops their plan. So everything hinges on the technology of fax. That's three examples. That's the magic number. Exactly. Wow. It's screenwriting 101. And this movie... Re okay, can I just say my best favourite oh, piece of trivia? Oh, Roger Ebert loves this line. Which line? That whole shut exchange up. there about how... What about Roger Ebert? Like, shut up, this is different. Mm. He thought that was hilarious. Roger Ebert has a great sense of humour sometimes. My favourite piece of trivia ever. And it just really makes me go, how does this work? Because we're actors. We three here are actors and performers. And... And there's a piece of trivia which is Robert De Niro is the first ever method actor to like do a method performance for a cartoon character. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> did he walk around when the cameras were off being fearless leader? <laughs> did he get did he have people say, Call me fearless leader? Like what does that mean? Like, how can I I'm not saying that you can't method act a cartoon. But how can you method act a cartoon? That's what I want to know. Like, how? I don't understand. Like, he's I the first ever actor to do it. I find that... That means there's been believe. other actors that have done it since. Yeah, but not before. And that's kind of like, uh, I don't know. Also, there's a new millennium. Is, is this a child? Yes, it is. No, <laughs> wait, it is wait. one of those little humans that are wait, called wait. children. How did you not know it's... Actually, that's not a child. That's just a really little girl. Well, it's just a thought I had yesterday. I'm like, <laughs> and I forgot all about her because yeah, she's a one-scene wonder. These are. Uh, did you know that woman grew up to be Mila Kunis? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Oh, she went to ask the Grand Powerful. White, redhead girl. Also, um, the CDI, which computer D something, is the ultimate lying piece of thing ever because it never does anything ever again. Well, it gets rid of a helicopter. <laughs> which that which is so confusing because I thought it only worked on cartoons. Well, does that mean you can they, put no, anyone and anything in said, the internet? They said special effects. 
Yeah. But so does know. that mean helicopters are special effects? But we'll get there when it comes. We're jumping all over the shop because now we're going into the world. This was the weirdest transition shot ever because it never happens again <laughs> ever in the movie. I forgot where about they that. where they go from cartoon to real through Robert De Niro's eyeball. And here's the best part. Someone must have been aiming a camera at the greatest actor of his generation, zooming it into his eyeball, and the director was sitting there going, Oh, fuck yeah, this is going to look real good when we put some fucking animation in his eyeball. Oh, yeah! And it did. It, that, it did look good. That was a funny gag, where they said this is a cartoon, and then of all things, a safe falls. Yeah, where did it, like, they threw it, yeah? I mean, I don't... I assume so. I don't need an explanation <laughs> for that, because it's just... Perfect. I love the fact that Jason Alexander is just got this like the jacket and he can like barely even lob them because he's such a nuggety little man with this horrible jacket that has no like flexibility. It's not it's an ill-fitting <laughs> jacket. Also, I, I like how they don't stop the car. Well, like how why would you? Rocky gets out. <laughs> I like how she should be dead, really. Like I wrote several times, okay, like how does death work in the real world? Because do people you, not die? You need to be CDI'd, Ryan. But then you'd only go to the internet where you'll die of starvation. No, I don't think so. Because be, you can get everything on the internet. You, you can mean, even get Nokia on the internet, which is something they <laughs> advertise in this movie. Um, That's so, like the best thing ever. So Fun I'm, fact, we're not advertised by Nokia, but I own a Nokia phone. And, uh, I do too. Uh, there we go. So, uh, the thing I wanted to mention with the CDI is that it's a reference to a really bad video games console, the Philips CDI. Ah, oh, and that's why it doesn't work really well. Probably, yes. And that's why it's related to bad animation. Is this the yeah, time? <laughs> that's right, because the CDI has... Have you heard of, you know, Legend of Zelda, Ryan? Yes, of course. Have you heard of the th really bad Zelda games, which are, like, 2D animated? Like, on the internet, there's that meme of the My Boy King or something No, like I that. haven't. I'm not up to date with the... Ryan, Zelda. I can assure you, the mm. king from those games mm. is right up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, the CDI, the, these Zelda games, they're made by Nintendo. <laughs> there are three Zelda games that weren't made by Nintendo. They were made for this Philips CDI system, mm. and they're just really badly voice acted, really badly playing uh, wait so they have voice video. acting in it yeah because you know some of those old games is just text right yeah those games are like distinctly like Ooh. not much before but beyond noises like oh or, uh, stuff like that okay yeah so yeah very bad and a lot of people have made memes out of them because they're so poorly animated and some of the lines are <laughs> sorry just oh, Robert, Robert 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 that's all i have to say Robert De Niro smiling just not saying anything it's the greatest and he's really cute when he asks them like have you killed them <laughs> i don't know what his character is like I haven't watched the original show, obviously, so is Fearless Leader this joyful? Dude, I I remember I remember Boris and Natasha. I don't remember Fearless Leader. Well Fearless Leader, from what I gather, is like you know when you have like the henchmen and then you see their boss is only like in a couple of episodes of mm. like an ongoing show. I think Fearless Leader is that type of character, yeah? Where Um, I think that's the case. I, I don't know. He yelled so hard that his hat blew off, by the way. That was also so good. So, Bartek. Yeah. We have to read the DVD for you. Oh, the this, DVD this is a, has this is a quest, right? Everything here. going on, Bartek. So let you know, audience, I came a bit late, and these guys were looking at the DVD, so <laughs> I, I don't know what's up. Thumbs up, Roger Ebert. Thanks, Roger. But can I just tell you the special features? Did you thank Roger or did the box thank Roger? <laughs> no. We all thank we Roger all for thank this. Roger. No, I thanked him. Okay. The special features have something real special for you, Bartek. Uh huh. I'll skip over the normal stuff. The last one is DVD-ROM features, including Screen Friends, a voice-activated activa software to navigate the computer, designed for adults as well as kids. Rocky, Bullwinkle, Natasha, Boris, and Fearless Leader respond to your commands. And then it just says, special features, not rated. So they could be R-rated special features. And then when you actually load in the DVD, it tells you, you must play this DVD for this feature to work on Windows 95 or higher. And I really want to know if it's too beyond the program, like too old for Windows 10 or something to play. So we're going to find out later. But Bartek, I read the last bit of the... Uh, well, hi, because this is my favorite scene. <laughs> oh, okay. 
the last bit of this description. This no, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get into it, the DVD in just a second. This guy who's in the the helicopter pilot, who was my favorite character by the, the same way, same here. Um, plays two other characters in this movie. Yeah, he plays the highway cop that pulls them over with a megaphone, and then he plays the guy who sells them the plane. Why is he in this movie? Well, he's only in the desert scenes then. Oh my god, that's actually really good. Like he's the this guy of the desert. <laughs> he's like Adam Sandler. Like he refuses to leave a location. You film him there. So remember in Snow Day when I talked about how Roger Ebert didn't like that Chris Elliott did that maniacal laugh. Yeah, he liked this movie and he didn't complain about that laugh. No, and this guy's not even a villain. That's a villain trope. I don't know why he laughed. So on the DVD, the back just says this. This is the final half of the you know overview. This fun-filled, pun-filled comic adventure picks up where the much-beloved series left off. Spoofing television, politics, higher education, the internet, and, and especially themselves. They prove once again that laughter is ageless, timeless, <laughs> and in Rockies. In and Rockies it just, what? And, and it ends. What? <laughs> and it just, <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it just ends with and in Rockies. <laughs> like it doesn't even go on. They didn't finish the sentence. <laughs> they could be talking about a completely different film. <laughs> Rocky. Like, is, are, were they going to quote like the movie, Ro like the character Rocky from the movie Rocky? Yeah. So they prove once again that laughter is ageless, timeless, and in Rockies. And in Rocky's own what? words, um, Adrian. Super duper. So, what do we think of the actual characters of Rocky and Bullwinkle in this film? Well, before that, we should establish the fact that this movie has a narrator. Oh, yeah! It does. It does. And it also has John Goodman. No, it's not John Goodman. No, but just John Goodman has my favourite line in this movie, which is they're like, you know, they're saying whatever, I am, I am FBI agent, blah, 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 and he's like, yeah, and... I'm actually John Goodman, and he says it in like the most John Goodman-y way that he could ever say his own name, ever. Yep, so you were gonna say, Bartek? This movie has a narrator. And what do we think of the narrator? I think that this narrator was really pushing the boundaries of what narration is. Yeah, I mean, he did the exact same thing in George of the Jungle 1 and 2, but yeah, he really pushed himself on this one. This in is this... his magnus opus. Huh. Yeah, this is his Rocky and Bullwinkle. Magnum opus. Um... Gesundheit. Thank you, Jonathan. I've got a bit of the sniffles going on. John <laughs> Goodman looking directly to the camera, just like, can I get my check now? Well, I mean, he's talking to the cops crew, not the Rocky and Bullwinkle uh, crew. He's not talking to anyone. Did he also do this purely for the money? Well, there's no comment from John Goodman. Well, no, no, his character was doing this cop show for the money, but the actor John Goodman was doing the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie for the art. So he was method acting for the money. So He was method acting for the money, but he was actually acting for the Rocky movie. So, what do we think of Rocky and Bullwinkle, the characters, though? The narrator's cool, he's really pushing it, but, like, what do we think of Rocky, and what do we think of Bullwinkle? Well, I suppose Bullwinkle, not to say that he is one of these characters, but he kind of has that bully trope of being really dumb. Oh, no. Um, not dumb characters. And he only beats me up twice a week. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He They make a lot of back-and-forward jokes... And they often talk about how those jokes aren't funny anymore. Hmm. And were they ever? Which I, I guess that's trying to push this whole point of that they're has beens and that they had a time and that time is no longer, which is kind of ironic when you consider what our show's about. Yeah, and considering the animation quality as well. But but they're really brave characters. I mean, they they show fear in some points, but every time ro and every time I mean uh when they're in the green lighthouse and when they're on the plane, Rocky doesn't hesitate to just jump straight into trying to fly. You know, he doesn't have that moment of, oh, can I do this? Can I do this? And then, like, ten seconds later, he decides to jump. He just goes, well, here goes nothing, and then jumps, and he just tries his best. And that's a, that's a really strong character who doesn't need that whole build-up of, oh, can I try to recreate what once made me great? Hmm. Well, what about you? What did you think of Rocky and Bullwinkle themselves? The characters that are the encapsulation of this entire Those film. Those two. Yeah, the truck. <laughs> hmm. 
I liked how sincerely cheesy they were. They didn't try yeah. to hide the cheese Could you imagine? like a Domino's pizza. Could you imagine they were the remake open of this? About it. Could you imagine the gritty reboot of this movie where it's just like Christopher Nolan's Rocky and Bullwinkle and they're very gruff and serious and if, moody and they talk about like existentialist <laughs> questions and stuff. If this was a Japanese film, like Rocky would like slap Bullwinkle every now and then, calling him an idiot. Rocky and Bullwinkle for me. I didn't enjoy them as characters. I didn't enjoy the movie when I first saw it. Now that I've seen it again, with time being the healing factor, I really enjoy the dynamic. The the comic dynamic of, a, you know, of the old comedy greats of Jerry and Lewis and Hope and Bing, where you have one that's the dumb one and one that's the smart one, but they're both equally stupid. You said Jerry and Lewis. Jerry and Lewis, Dean and Lewis. Yeah. Because these characters have names. I just I just understood it then when I saw the subtitles, like Lewis and Martin. I'm like, oh Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. No, that's their that's their real name. So and these two are comedic duo themselves. They had a TV show. That got cancelled a month before this I think aired. It, did it get cancelled or to rerun? Did it get cancelled or did it end? I, I think did it get cancelled or did it end? I'm not cancelled. It says I'm it not in an the ex- IMDb trivia, guys. I'm not an expert on my Keenan and Kel lore. I don't know <laughs> the history of. <laughs> they it had too Good well. Burger, didn't they? Yeah. Did you guys watch Keenan and Kel? No, I didn't a have a bit. I didn't I have did. Nickelodeon. I love Keenan and Kel. So you're really happy to see them in this movie, then? Yeah. I mean, I was happy when Keenan had a little cameo in Big, Big Fat, Fat Liar. Liar, but you just didn't know that because I was. You guys were busy asking if he was Screech. <laughs> hey, we haven't mentioned Screech is in like Screech, 10 episodes. Is Screech in this film? There's a lot of cameos is in this Screech? film. It would have been great if Screech was in this film. Is movie. he Screech? Is she Screech? Of all the people that could have been in it, Dustin Diamond, year 2000, he could have done it. He really had nothing else going on. So, I think in the first episode I called him Dustin Powers, which was really wrong. Fucking numbnuts. Powers was Screech's last name. He had a first name? Yeah, Samuel Powers. Why was he called Screech? You've talked about this, Ryan. Shut up. You just, you just He so embodies the character, you're not sure where the Dustin ends and the Screech begins. <laughs> like, he should have voiced Rocky. I, that would have been pretty good. <laughs> okay, okay. This is what I love about this movie, right? It takes, like, com- comic book cartoon logic oh, yeah. and runs with it. So, like, in one of my favourite, like, random comic book things is Superwoman is versing this creature who's, like, powered by the moon... So Superwoman just punches the moon into another galaxy and the creature's like, no, and just beats the shit out of it. This is the kind of movie where it's like, we need a water tower. There is no water tower. We could do it in that building. No, we'll build a water tower so we can assassinate him in an old fashioned way. Like, this is that kind of movie where it is like, and the sun broke and then it would just like break in half. It's like finding the most Look, facts. Official facts, it said too. Official (laughs) facts. Unlike those unofficial facts. Yeah. Going back to what you said there, it's like taking, fixing a problem in the most literal way, even if it sounds impossible. I've got a question. Which Ask one's it. Keenan and which one's Keenan's Ke- the fatter one, Kel's the other one. Okay, how come Keenan never has outfits that fit him, ever? He's a big boy. <laughs> but, well, I mean, none of Jason Alexander's jackets fit him in this film. It's <laughs> or a- in Seinfeld. It's and so he's important. a big boy. We're all big boys deep down. Look, who else is a big boy in this shot? Bullwinkle, not wearing clothes. He's wearing gloves? Do they fit? <laughs> yeah. They're really big, Ryan. He's a really big boy. Mickey Mouse's gloves fit. No, they're too big. And Bullwinkle's aren't? No, they actually fit his hands quite well. Mickey Mouse versus Bullwinkle. Skit. You guys go. You, Ryan, a Mickey Mouse. You're Bullwinkle. Ten seconds. <laughs> Scene. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what the fuck was that? That, oh, was, just bull- two bull- that was Bullwinkle. That was Porky Pig. That was fucking... <laughs> Thank you. That is Walky Pig. <laughs> that was perfect. That was Bullwinkle to a T. He is Walky Pig. And here's my. And here's my. What was I supposed to do? Mickey, Mickey Mouse? Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that, Will? Do you want to go again? No, that, was, that was my reaction to a thanks for dubbing me to be Bullwinkle Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Bartek, it's gonna be okay. So, <laughs> that was his. Oh, fuck! Oh, God! <laughs> Bartek, you alright? Bartek yeah. broke a rib. So, 
I guess I could do a Mickey Mouse, but can we really follow anything up with gold after that? No, I mean, no. That's, that was fine. It, it would be just kind of like my I, my problem is I always screw up Mickey Mouse. He eventually turns into Mario and then vice versa. So I'd be like, it's me, and I'm just like, no, that's that's too much. And then that, it's like, that was a Mickey Mouse voice. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Mar Mario's more. Yeah, no, but then eventually I mix them up. It kind of goes in one to the other. It's like when I do an Indian accent for too long, it slowly becomes German for some reason. I don't know. Or when you do Indiana Jones theme and then try to do How come she's in pink? Because she's good. She's the main character. She needs to stand out and she's the love interest. So, pink is the new black, huh? I just realised both Mario and Mickey Mouse both wear white gloves and it kind of felt like that was Wait. a big revelation and I'm like... No, it's not. Go away. Does Mario wear gloves? Yeah, he does. I can't does. remember. You know who else wears Dude, gloves? He... Bullwinkle. Can we hear that again? Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. I, look, I only can do Porky Pig once, guys. <laughs> Ryan. Speaking of accents, every time I try to do South African, it verges off into basically every other accent <laughs> under the sun. It's a hard one to do. Catch your breath, Bart. Like it's gonna be okay. You're gonna survive this in Red Bait Women's Prison. Why uh, is it called Red Bait? Is, is there a pun there? They can't say jail Let's bait. investigate the puns, shall we? What does this pun mean? <laughs> Just keep going. Alright. This what... is a real Christ-like image here. You know, like, she's the crucified Jesus ascending and then she's going to come back from the dead. She's been gone for how many days? But it's a rebirth scene. But <laughs> red. Bait prison. Upside down crucifix. Mm. Satanic. Disney, yeah. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> just, just Disney. Well, in the South, yes. in the South Park episodes where Mickey Mouse appears, he's kind yeah, of. Satanic. You know what? Been better, really. I honestly think that this movie. I don't. I love Robert De Niro. Don't get me wrong. But wouldn't this movie have been ten times greater if, if Julia Louis Dreyfus was Natasha and Seinfeld was Fearless Leader? Well, ignoring your Seinfeld, there weren't they already a couple in North? Yeah. But wouldn't it be great if Seinfeld was fearless leader in this? And he's like, Have you killed him? What's the deal with squirrels? So, <laughs> so that's the trio. Who would Kramer play? Michael Reynolds? Richards? Whatever? I don't know. Some racist southern guy. He oh, wait. He just plays himself. <laughs> whoa, whoa. He's actually, not southern, Ryan. Actually, to be fair, we're talking about racism in a scene where... They're racist against <coughs> Bullwinkle. Uh, uh, mooses, apparently. Meese, whatever the plural is. But it's like, mooses. they say, what do you call it? They do call him an animated freak, but it's an anti-moose rally. So is it, do they just have a problem with animated moose? Or would uh, or is it just moose in or, general? Or is it, they like, don't like the fact that he's a moose, so they find something See, else. this is one of these rare cases in which we could ask all these questions, but really, what's the point? The movie also says you could ask these questions. We're not going to answer it. Like, when... Herself, the legend, Whoopi Goldberg appears. Isn't her name Judge Cameo? As a judge, yeah. She, as Judge Cameo. She, as judge Cameo. She, they make a comment of, and why aren't we, and why are we animated when Boris and all that are live action? It's just like, I don't know. These questions, we can never get answers because this is an purposely done move and maneuver. The answer is everything's on purpose. Everything like why are they are they racist against animated ones? Yes. Are they racist against real ones? Yeah. Every answer is yes. Well, no. I think the answer would be the moose because they didn't have a problem with Rocky. Rocky was in the crowd. With no, the I said animated people. moose. Yeah. Uh, he was just asking, are they racist against animated moose? Well, right now Rocky's on stage. He crashed on the stage, so now they like. And they're Bollywood. clapping because he just farted his way on the stage. Yeah. I mean. That's another weird thing. In the show, his He has, like, wings, like, the spread wings things. In the he no, had wings no, in that scene. It was subtle, but I think they were there. I believe there, there were some wing flaps there. <laughs> that's not the point I'm trying to make, guys! <laughs> yeah, is it that Bartek, cute? stop trying to contribute. I'm trying to talk over you, Bartek, please. <laughs> the point I want to make is that in the show, he just kind of floats, sort of, a lot of the time. Like, he doesn't have that whole smoke behind him thing. Spelling just... out the end? Look at Ke look at Keenan and Kel there in the background. Might I add, I really wish that I wrote out the speech that, I think, is it Keenan gives about yeah. the car? That's a great It was, scene. like, the weirdest <laughs> speech I've ever heard in a movie. It's right up there with Frankie Muniz's speech from Big Fat Liar where he says about the meatball in his dad's throat. I mean... 
<laughs> what was, is this? That one, that one was a cover up. This is a genuine like example of character development. Oh, I know. And might I add, out of nowhere, these two characters inject something into the movie that the movie never asks to be injected. It's kind of like these guys are heroin addicts and they're injecting you full of the goodness that is America. Because out of nowhere, they're just like, we've been looking for America and we can't find it. And then the whole movie from then on is just like about finding America and, and what is America and American greatness. And it's just like, when did yeah, this come in? They were talking about it when they were driving and now all of a sudden they discover it. it, it they're almost like having the development of, to use a recent movie we've done, um, Jason Siegel in Gulliver's Travels, where he he's introduced, he has a problem, and then the character, and then Jack Black fixes it, and he's really happy, and then they continue from there. But they've just gone straight from the problem to Too happy happily ever after. <laughs> they love their car now; they give it away. Well, it's because Keenan and Kel were in their own movie about fighting America, and it's like a crossover with this movie. And in between Rocky flying and all that, they've had like a ninety-minute journey of self-discovery. I like just think that in the movie Borat they could have he could have gotten a lift from them instead of the drunk frat guys wouldn't it be great if you got a lift from Rocky and Bullwinkle <laughs> and they're just like <laughs> we're finding America he's like good I want to find America too and then it could be a bunch of cartoon characters <laughs> wandering around America trying to find it and then Borat every scene would like get what animal they are wrong mm. like when he said like the turtle, and he would try and eat them like the turtle was a dog or something and he would try and eat them well, he has a bear, so the bear could kill him. So, I really like this guard. He's so... He's great. he's great. because at the end of the movie, he's just sitting there still, and he's, like, got a little cooker and everything, and he's got a well, beard going on, and, and he's just starving to death. And I like that he's, like, cooked the burger until it's just, like, completely charcoal. Well. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's a nice touch. My thing touch. is, what's with all the hay? Is he a farmer? I think it's trying to, like, play on that stereotype of dumb... I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, because he's clearly... Nordic, Swedish. Nordic, but like dumb southerner? Farmers. Like southerners are farmers. Like Look at him, he's so happy, and little did he know that he would be waiting there for four days. But she at least keeps her promise that she'd be back. After, Shut up! After dealing with his Honestly, car. for a guy with an IQ in the negatives, he survived pretty well outside that movie theatre. I really would have liked it to cut to the end of the credits, and he's still waiting, and he's just like eating his arm. <laughs> even though, even though one of the scenes before the credits started was him finally, you know, getting with no, the girl. I'm saying like, if that didn't happen, oh, you can't establish these things after you say them. Fuck your mama, <laughs> Ryan. Not Chicago, no. Don't you like Chicago? No. Don't you know that the greatest movie ever, and there are many, just visiting was filmed in Chicago. I thought you were gonna say Wayne's, Wayne's World. Was was it filmed in Chicago? It was set in Chicago. In Chicago, Illinois. In the city? Oh, Chico yeah. Roll is my favourite city. Yeah, I knew you were Chico Not as good as Musk Stick Valley, though. Yes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes. Do like bitter it. end. Oh, Foreshadowing the bitter end. there. I think it was a play on with The Bitter End. No, it has nothing to do with the <laughs> band, the living Radio age. Shed. Yeah, <laughs> Radio Shack. <laughs> oh. Wouldn't it be great if it was, was not in the movie? Yeah. Yes. So, Will, you have some facts. <laughs> this show, the Jerry Lewis. I mean, Jerry Lewis! <laughs> Jerry Springer. All right, skit. Jerry Lewis, Jerry Springer. Okay. I love okay. the Jerry Seinfeld. We're show. doing the skit of Jerry Lewis meets Jerry Seinfeld. No, hey! Springer. No, and you're Jerry, and Jerry Springer's trying to find out who's the real Jerry. All right. What's the deal with Jerry's? All right, all right. Well, I've clearly got to do... My Jerry Springer impersonation. No, you're Jerry Lewis. So, no, he's Jerry Springer. Oh Jerry. my god, guys, how's it going? You are not the father. Oh, jeez. That's Maury Povich. Yes, it was. That's not my show. And I'm Jerry Seinfeld against myself. What's the deal with two Jerry Springers? One's clearly a Maury Povich, and the other's clearly Barjack. No, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. What, what happened? What happened between you two? Between the Jerry Springer and the other Jerry Springer? I don't know, the real Jerry Springer's in Austin Powers 2 at the moment. What's the deal with that? Now, this Jerry, uh, tell him to fuck off. Fuck off! <laughs> Jerry! 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 Oh, Thank that's you. it! I'm gonna throw a chair now. Oh, that's it! I'm gonna write a movie about a bee, and that's gonna teach all of you! Bodyguard guy, pull, pull them apart, pull them apart. <laughs>
Can I be Chris Hansen now? <laughs> <laughs> now here's my final thought. Fuck you. Back to the movie. No, back to Jerry Seinfeld writing the B movie script out of spite because Jerry Seinfeld, Jerry Springer told him to fuck off, and are Jerry we... Lewis is just sitting in the background just watching. Are we gonna do the? B? Who are these two guys? <laughs> Should I know? I felt like, am I supposed to know this cameo? Is <laughs> they both like? Or is it like the to, one guy CGI twice? I don't know. To, to be fair, <laughs> I don't know. To be fair, I was very interested to learn more about them at the time, but they were there so briefly that I forgot about them. Oh, trying to look them up. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, that's what everyone's doing at home. I right gotta now. phone. I gotta phone. I gotta phone the director. Ba, 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 ba. Hello, director. Are you there? Are you there, Mr. Director? Could you tell me who these two twins are? Yes. <laughs> who are they? I don't know. You said that you knew, though. Hand me to the writer. Mr. Writer, you wrote these two twin characters in there. Who did you originally have in mind for the twins? Now, look, I, 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 I sent out the requests for the agency to get the actors in there. I really wanted Mario and Luigi to play them. I, you can tell that because I had the lines, Mamma Mia, there. So Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo were unavailable. No, 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 no. Actually, Mario and Luigi. You're talking about the live-action people. I'm talking about the animated people. We got, we got, um, we got Gilbert Gottfried or it's, Wallace, whatever his name is. I do is. believe it is Billy Crystal as the mattress salesman. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we, we, we wanted to further the end of maybe the Billy Crystal, John Goodman duo, because the year after, as you know, we made uh, Monsters, Inc. Um, but that's not important. We're talking about Mario and Luigi. They didn't come here. We couldn't make Super Mario Brothers two. Do you like the fact that I like? I just ended that sketch. Do you like the fact that Boris and Natasha have like fifteen outfits in one day, but they never have any luggage? Yeah, yeah. There, there's some nice outfits. They don't all fit, and they're, they're nice in outfits. the southern heat. That's it, Bartek? Just, yeah, yeah. They, they, they're I strong. That. They're strong. Where are they carrying these outfits, though? Like? The pockets. Oh, Layers. Layers. They can't... Right, it's a live-action cartoon. Clowns can fit in cards, you can fit clothes in pockets. But here's the thing I get confused. They can get injured because they're live-action, yeah? But then they don't get injured sometimes, so I'm very confused as to what happens. And you can say, Oh, Ryan, didn't you just say a moment ago there's no point in asking questions like this? It's a live-action cartoon and it's all deliberate? Yeah, you're right. And I should just shut the fuck up with all my questions and just acknowledge what the movie's doing right. And you know what it's doing right? That bandana with her hair combo. That the whole entire movie, she's always got her hair tied back in some kind of little bandana. Yeah, if and it is sexy as fuck. If you cover her face, it looks like a character. I'm aroused. That's accurate. Will's got an erection, and that only happens in one millennia. And I think that her face should be deleted from the movie, just so it looks like the bandana is a character like Cousin It. What? <laughs> oh, she's got the sunglasses on now, it doesn't work. She had them on the whole entire No, the sunglasses no, were, on, they the were up on the bandana. You eat look even at that guy. <laughs> You've got to rewatch Rocky Look, look, Moore, it's Eagle. the same actor. Why is he evil? And also, I like this whole courtroom scene. It's probably the best scene in the entire movie, in my opinion. Did we have... Oh, look, it's her outfit again. Did we have a favourite character in this movie? Bartek and I said the helicopter pilot. What about you, Will? So I guess the question is, do you have a favourite character, Will? No, <laughs> the audience. Think about it. Think about oh, it real hard and write us. I'm sorry, I forgot that the audience were with us. They're with us in our loins. Is that our dick? No, our testicles. But that's where the baby juice comes from. Yum. Ah, uh, anatomy lessons. <laughs> yeah, I'm a scientist. All right, just to quickly change the conversation from balls, do you guys <laughs> know that the Rocky and Bullwinkle show was one of the first American cartoons to have its animation outsourced really? to Mexico, no less? Woo! Well, all the and way now... from North America to North America. Woo! I, ha I have no idea if this was animated in Mexico. <laughs> Whoopi we'll we'll Goldberg is animated in Mexico. <laughs> She's a delight to see in movies like this. I feel like she's just walked onto off the set of Monkey Bone, and she's like, no, I'm keeping on. She's kind of got the same amount of power. Because what is death if not a judge of sorts? Oh, yeah, they play her like that. She's not dressed in a Chinese... Who's your favourite character, Will Brooks, damn it? Is it me? Is it... Is it... Is it... 
Whoopi's mm. lack of eyebrows. Let him think. Let, the, let there be silence. Don't be afraid of silence. This. Don't be afraid of silence, guys. I'm just letting you know that you shouldn't be afraid of silence. There shouldn't I'm not have afraid to, of the silence. There shouldn't always, you know, have to be someone always I'm speaking. embracing the silence. It's fine to not Is have silence, silence his favourite character? You know, well, you know, you can't always be silent. You, you, you don't always have to speak of the silence. You, you can actually be silent. It's okay. You don't have to just keep talking so that there isn't silence. It's, it's I'm learning from fine. you, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just telling you how it works while yeah. we're waiting for Will to answer the question of who his favourite character is. He's rubbing his chin. The chin is bleeding from him rubbing it so hard. You, you can make us laugh all you want, Will, but you know the audience aren't going to see what you're doing. Why are you even trying? The man who isn't John Goodman. <laughs> what, the other guy? <laughs> no. The, look, oh, John, John, John Goodman. Goodman playing the cop. Oh, I thought, he meant, I thought he meant like the cop. Who wasn't John Goodman? Well, like, look, the one he's, he's, he's the pretty truck. great, but like he's not the best character. Like how this woman's typing on nothing. There's not even paper in her typing machine. She's, she's got the minutes in her head. Mm. They hired a, they hired Bullwinkle's grandmother to do it. Did, did this remind you of Blackadder Goes Forth, Ryan? Uh, yeah, this reminded me of a lot of things. You know, this reminded me of Kramer versus Kramer. It reminded me of a few good men. You know, it reminded me of Monkey Bone, and it reminds me that Whoopi Goldberg has a wicked pair of glasses, and that she can be really happy. Like, Whoopi Goldberg plays cynical very well, but when you see happy Whoopi Goldberg, she makes you happy. Look at her. She's like a kid. She's like, oh my god, it's Rocky and a Bullwinkle. Who are you a bigger fan of, Rocky or Bullwinkle? No, no, no. I, I think she'd be more about the Rocky and... Kosh. Super Ktosh. Uh, I forgot the second word, so I had to think for a second in silence. Are they saying, like, David Kosh from from <laughs> Sunrise Australia? <laughs> <laughs> New skit, Rocky and David Kosh, go! <laughs> you do your Rocky? <laughs> do I? I'm trying to think of another cartoon character now. And oh! You... How's it going, Ryan? <laughs> no, 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 his name's David. <laughs> It's me. I'm not Kosh. <laughs> you're Kosh. You're Ryan Kosh. Get it together, guys. We're on air. <laughs> Fuck me, dead. <laughs> so, so that went nowhere very quickly, but this guy has a plane right behind him. I like how you think, oh, does he not have a plane? Where's and the then look? he does. Bartek. Yeah? Hold on a fucking second. This isn't a desert. No, it's a crop field. <laughs> What is a crop you field liar. if not a deserted area? I bet wait, wait, and he's keeping this. He's gonna give my step to like a new trial. Like, what did his step something do? Wait, what? I thought it was a new trial. I thought he said trial. It could be both. This is gonna give my was, stepson a new trial. Was he was he hired by Phillips to test a new CDI or something? No, I think his stepson is the helicopter pilot, and he's been murdering people. <laughs> Oh, but also the duality is that they both have flying vehicles. Exactly. They're and then where does the cop come other. into this? Because he arrested... So, Ryan, is this question so deep that you had to walk out of the cinema at this time? Yeah, this is was, this was where it went really deep. So this is like around here is where I just said to my mother and father, I'm done. Can I go home now? Pearls before swine. <laughs> That's right. You were a swine, Ryan, when you were young. But not anymore. Now you're smart. Now you're a pearl. And now the cheapo rento company is pulling them over for not finishing their paperwork. We didn't see that. It's kind of like in Batman vs. Superman, where Batman robs Lex Luthor's laboratory, but you don't actually see that scene. You just see the aftermath of that scene, and you know that scene's cut out. It's like in this movie, you know for a fact they stole the... They didn't do the, all the paperwork, they just stole the car, but we never see that interesting scene. We just see the aftermath. And we can see Jason Alexander jump like a cartoon character, and little did I know that I needed that in my life. Well, and he's playing a cartoon character, so that's fine. But he's a real-life man. Yeah, but he's, he's like, look, if you were to go up to someone and say, Boris Badenov, they'll be like, oh, of course, that's a cartoon character. No, they'll say, oh, of course, Jason Alexander, of course, he did it for the money, you know. Jerry. What? That's something Jason Alexander says sometimes. You mean as George? Yeah. Or when he's talking to Jerry Seinfeld? 
Well, it's, I it's mean, probably both situations. But, I imagine Jason Alexander <laughs> has talked to Jerry Seinfeld. You do Seinfeld know that Jerry point. Seinfeld in Seinfeld plays Jerry Seinfeld, right? No, I thought it was Jerry Lewis. Oh, shit. No, it's Jerry Springer, dude. So, Will, you brought along a few few pieces of notes. What are your notes for this movie? Because this movie has a real emotional impact. You know, the movie is so emotional that we don't even talk about the plot. Oh, I thought he only had like two lines <laughs> of notes. <laughs> but no, he's got three pages. <laughs> he's going back to the other page. He's got nothing. Hey, stop. Jason Alexander, and Alexander is spelt wrong, has quite a lot of hats in this film. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he does. Oh, he has, like, a different hat for every... Like, it matches each suit as well. Also, his eyebrows. They also, keep changing. In yeah, each. now here, he looks like George. Yeah, because she's rubbing his head to make him hard. I believe Roger Ebert really liked Natasha's performance. I mean, sorry, Russo's performance. Renee Russo is amazing. She's, like, the one who really sells it for me. Do you and Jason Alexander really elevate the kind of comedy of the movie? Rocky and Bullwinkle, not so much. They're kind of the straight men in their own film. Like, Bullwinkle's an idiot, sure, but it's kind of this self reflexive self-aware thing. But these guys, it's like they're aware that they're cartoons, but it's Saved not by like... Bell. Sorry, go ahead. It's like they're aware they're cartoons, but it's not like they're aware they're cartoons. Like, they're aware that they're cartoons, but they don't... They're not aware that their behavior and their mentality is cartoonish. It's like, it's not a big deal that they're a cartoon. Yeah. Like, oh, you're Rocky and Bullwinkle. You're those 2D characters. You can exist in real life. I believe that. I was wearing his monocle again. And it matches his shirt. What the fuck, Ryan? And it's a purple one. I like that. I like that. Too. It's a nice touch. Oh. Where, where do you think his scar came from? The Maybe. South. When I said what the fuck, Ryan, it transitioned back in time. He got so shocked he got a scar. I don't know, I felt like I had to justify because I said what the fuck, Ryan, and didn't explain why I said that. Yeah, why did you say that? Because earlier on, like literally a few minutes ago, Will told me that, hey, this isn't a desert, and you said earlier in this episode, hey, he, you never see the monocle again, so I thought, you you know, following that whole we were wrong thing. Now we have to say that Will was wrong about something. Uh, I'm now noticing something about Jason Alexander's teeth. Are they his real teeth? They're my teeth. Ah, oh, they're your teeth inserted into his mouth. It's, Does that it's, mean it's you a... have his teeth in your mouth? No, why would I have his teeth? He doesn't have teeth. That's why I gave no, him No, I teeth. thought like you swapped teeth and now you have his teeth, meaning you can bite the way Jason Alexander bites, and Ryan, he bites the way you do. That's really stupid. But he's got old muscle. What? What's the pun? That's the pun. I, I know it's in the movie, but what's the pun? I, oh, I didn't hear the line. Moosel. He's, he's got all moosel. Is, what's the, what's the wordplay there? Muscle. Oh, I remember that line. Yeah, that's a good line. Yeah. I, it's just, I didn't hear the line. And you just, you know. You Quoted just at you, like. Randomly. And know. she's dead. Like, like, if I would just go, must I need to go beep So what does he sing say? It's like, kissing, but I kept missing it each time. Uh, what? His poster. Oh, the billboard camp, the kissing camp. babies, boobs. Who knows? So like, did you you say you watched it multiple times? Did you not try? No, it? because they, it's in several shots. Kissing reaching babies, hearts. Reaching hearts. I didn't read the. <sighs> like I'm saying, why didn't you pause it? No, because I'm I'm too invested in the plot. Re-elect president. President Will... sign off. <laughs> kiss all oh, kiss off. No, it's sign off. No, no. When they crashed into the sign, all you could read now was kiss off. No, it's his name's Sino. Yeah, I know, but when the sign Bartek, got broken, why aren't you getting what I'm saying? It's his name is Sino. Yeah, Will, I'm... could you explain to Bartek that his name is President Sino? Ryan, I, you're not getting what Bartek. I'm saying. His name is President Sino. Will, could you explain to Ryan that after the plane crashed into the sign, all you why could read was "kiss off"? Why is he telling me? Why is he telling me his name is President Kiss Off? I don't get it. Is it? Is there a joke in there? See. Rocky doesn't have the flaps now, it doesn't look like. But I swear he had the wing flaps earlier. He does college. not. You're just... Okay, so... See... Guys, I don't have the wing Am flaps. Am I just seeing flaps Jesus. where I want to see flaps? <laughs> what the fuck was that? That's what... It's me, Rocky. What the fuck is Michael Jackson doing in here? I'm not... My... I'm not Michael Jackson. I'm not Michael Jackson. That's Get out of here, Jackson. You're no, dead. No, no, no. That's... I'm not Michael Jackson. That's Michael Jackson. 
Hey, I'm Michael Jackson. See, that's Michael Jackson. Get out of here, Michael Jackson. Yeah, and get take your here, creepy Michael monkey Jackson. with you. See, Rocky has this really weird inflection, doesn't he? Which is, I'm tired of all this he's, shit. He's, no, he's got that... She wears her gloves in the jacuzzi. Yeah, but no, the inflection is kind of like this almost defeatist kind of thing. He's got a shower cap for his hat. <laughs> This defeatist kind of thing, you know? Really down, mopey kind of thing. That's the inflection he has. Yeah. It's because he's defeated. He's He can't fly. No, 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 but he, he's with an idiot. He looks no, no, like no. he's flying right now, Ryan. <laughs> See, we can't get him to say something wrong if we keep saying wrong things. And I'm saying that he's <laughs> always had that voice, even in the cartoons. It's because he's depressed. It's the same voice actress as in the original cartoon. And she's in still this working film. today, is that correct? Yes. I don't know about today, but it's certainly here. She's like, no, she Will did, said she today. She did a short film as Rocky in 2013, according to Wikipedia. That's today. It's only three Wikipedia years ago. Is, why is that woman got a black eye? <laughs> what are the women looking at the screen has like a big black eye? And I just want to know her backstory. Did someone hit her? Who hit her? Domestic abuse. God, this got this film's getting dark. So Bartek did a quiz. I did do a well. I mean, <laughs> could you tell us about this look, quiz? Th there's a problem on this show. <laughs> For those of you that listen to every episode, or at least the most recent episodes, ever since like I don't know Starsky and Hutch, I've been struggling to find quizzes because we keep doing movies that are part of. Excuse big... me, Monkey Bone had a great quiz. Yeah, it did, but I mean. Listen to what I'm about to say, Ryan. That's a standalone movie, and I'm saying that we've done a lot of movies that are adaptations or remakes, and it's really hard to find quizzes, or in some cases, good quizzes, for these movies, because a lot of the quizzes are for the main, like... Canon. The main canon, the main adaptation, the main thing. Like, Rocky Source, Bullwinkle's yeah. a cartoon. I found four quizzes about the Rocky Bullwinkle cartoon, none about the movie, so it's getting really hard to find quizzes. So this one, I did not find a movie... Sorry, I did not find a quiz for this movie. I found four quizzes for the cartoon, and but one of them's worth talking about, as as Ryan's prompting me to. And I I wasn't actually planning to talk about it, but Ryan loves it so much that <laughs> by golly, I'll I'll do it. Did you see it. it, Will? Did you click on this quiz? I saw. I didn't <laughs> comprehend. <laughs> okay, no, did, did you guys read the description yes. of the quiz? I also read that over two thousand people have done the quiz, and only sixty percent <laughs> were successful. So. Remember, for those of you guys that listened to the Bewitched episode, how there was a quiz in that one, which, that's another movie where I actually found questions about the movie, where one of the quizzes was that you had to do the quiz to help Samantha get back at Will Ferrell's character. Yeah. This quiz had a similar thing. It was that Bullwinkle's been trapped in the quiz by Natasha and Boris, and that you have to do the quiz in order to save him and every question's not just a question it's boris or natasha talking to you asking you questions about the show and in some cases giving the answers <laughs> i <laughs> did half of it because it got too complex for me when they're like you know blah 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 this but one of them was where did these people come from the hint is it orbits earth and it starts with the and then the second word starts with an M and ends with an N. And it's like, oh, I don't know. It could be anywhere. <laughs> it could be Minnesota. It's Who like, knows? one of the questions was like, this one is hard one. Wh wh where is upside downium? And it's like up, down, left, right are the options. And the next question like basically tells you that the answer is down. My favorite one was like, simple one of, where do we come from? And it's like, <laughs> the answer's there. And then the next one's like, that was easy. You idiots. You should have got it together. Yeah, they sometimes make a comment like if a previous question was easy or hard. But and they're like, are they bickering as a relationship as well? The saddest thing about that quiz is, yeah. The saddest thing about it is there's no conclusion. You just don't know if Rocky's okay or not. Bullwinkle. Like, oh, Bill Bullwinkle. Rocky's hanging. fine. Rocky flew away. <gasps> Rocky's a fucking pussy. Don't call me a pussy, you- Get out of here, Jackson! We told you! Get back with the other five! I no. don't think flying squirrels actually fly. I think they glide. Well, he glides. In so the perhaps. cartoon version, at the end of the movie, he has- Oh glided. my god. Bullwinkle's gone to the wrong city. And now, this is a scene from Independence Day, and it was all Bullwinkle's fault. Why? Because he's, he's he didn't save the world. 
Oh shit, that's right. Because the military was too busy being zombified. You are so smart. Ryan. I'm a smart guy. You know, some people say to me, Ryan, why are you doing a podcast about movies that nobody cares about? And I say to those people, I say to them, believe it or not, I do say this. I say, how dare you, sir? How dare you, madam? People respect movies like this. People love movies like The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. And they roll their eyes so hard it falls out of their head. And the little squirrels that fly, fly. swoop in. <laughs> no, they fly. Swoop in and eat their eyeballs. And then, guess what? They can't look at me surly anymore because I was right. It's just like just visiting. Man, Ryan, you're so smart. If only you weren't ugly. I'm fucking hot. Sorry, I got the two words mixed up. Yeah, hot. <laughs> um, so... What do we think of the CGI? We haven't talked about it. Well... It's seamless, yeah. There's CGI? Yeah. Well, what's CGI? Is it... Is it... Is it it's Robert De Niro's hair. hair? <laughs> oh, he's a thing! Yeah, high five! <laughs> Woo! Believe it or not, that's another thing that Roger Ebert really liked. Was Ro his hair? His hair. He liked Fearless Leader's hair. <laughs> it's... Why? It's impeccably well he, done. He really mine. liked it. <laughs> Why? Why do you like because, it? Because he did. What? <laughs> so and, you know, and you know what? In the video where he's with the Roper, or whatever his name is, when he said the hair, Roper actually gave it to him like, okay, yeah, the hair was good. Yeah. Like, that's the one thing he gave him. Yeah, the hair was good and, it tr and the movie tried. <laughs> <laughs> so we can all agree the hair is good. I mean, yes. look... Ebert did he shave it? his head and they've just glued something onto him? Or did he shave it around and cut it and gelled it? I don't know what's happening with it. So this is the scene that I've apparently... Remembered? Remembered. I was going to say seen, but remembered, yeah. Like not, like when the CIA guy who, you know, is the... Randy, Randy Quaid, yeah. Yeah, the most, the most in the movie character there is because he's all over the place. Did you do you not know who Randy Quaid is? I actually didn't realize that it was the same character from earlier in the movie. Yeah. Do you not know who Randy Quaid is? I've heard the name. Randy Quaid is the most interesting guy ever. He rocked up to LA and within a short period of time he won like within like 6 months he won an Oscar. Right? Nobody knew who this guy was. Like, that, yeah, you know, he'd been in a couple of films or something. But he rocked up to Hollywood and won an Oscar. And his brother's with Dennis Quaid. And they're an acting, you know, they're acting family. And he's in uh, the Vacation movies as uh, Cousin Eddie. That's his most classic role that people know him from. But uh, what he's famous for now is that he's completely batshit crazy in real life. He and his uh, wife, I think, or fiance, live in a caravan or an RV, and they are escaping, or they used to, they've been caught now, were evading the law. They skipped out on some court trial thing for some damage of property or something, and they were living for years, running away from the police. And then posting videos on YouTube and shit like this, basically being like, ha ha ha, never catch me. He's an actor that's completely lost his mind, and he believes that the Hollywood Mafia destroyed his career. Wait, 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 wait. Are you trying to tell me that celebrities aren't above the law? I know! Did Judge Cameo lie to Did me? Whoopi Goldberg lie? Did she commit that, what's that L word that's like, you, you help your friends? Hot. That, you're thinking did of she, hot again. Did she hot Randy Quaid? <laughs> no, seriously, what's that word that, like, you hire your friends or whatever? La Larson? No, Larkin? I don't know what you were trying to say to me. I don't speak Polish. Well, you, I've hire, got you, hire, you hire your friends? It, it's Bart, like, it's... Fun fact, Bartek was late for this I, podcast. Am I getting abused? Fun fact, Bartek was late for this podcast, and he messaged Will. Not me, by the way. Messaged and Will. How was I going to message you? And message he told me... <laughs> That the bus timetable was cuckoo, yeah. but he didn't spell cuckoo usually. I'm like, what's what's that Polish for? And then I'm like, oh, it's cuckoo. But at first, I thought it was kuru, the disease you get from eating other human beings. I'm like, what are they doing on that bus, Bartek? No wonder it's running late. The bus driver's eating other human beings. Well, you misread it. <laughs> no, I think you rewrote that. I wrote K U K U. That's not his. K U K U. Maybe you should look it up.
Best Buy, Nokia. Oh, some Travel Lodge product placement. Mm, that is turning. He's me surfing on. the web. You know, That's like the most ultimate 2000s, 90s thing was the internet is anything you want it to be. Like, you could hack the government by just pressing Control O Delete on your computer. Oh, and ending the task. Yeah. In this movie, there's still a Simpsons joke. Like, like, which one's the any key? Did you notice that? Well, yes, yeah, I but did. I feel like that joke's been made so nah, much. Nah, it's a Simpsons joke. It's been made so much. Nah, it's the Simpsons. Isn't it? Like, when I say, I which one's the any key? I can't think of it beforehand. I can't I think of it in any other I mean, other maybe thing. there's some expert on history of which one's the any key joke. Oh, Who will be able to dive in and say, no, Ryan, it's <laughs> actually from... And Shakespeare, it's, it's in there is, no, there is dream. And knowing it, it was Al Gore who no. said, because Al Gore thinks that he invented the internet. No, He's the guy who's like, I invented the any key joke. You guys are wrong. You know who it was? It was me. I didn't make a lot of things, but I made that joke first. And who God? are you? God? <laughs> No, it's me, Orson Welles, who wishes that he made <laughs> The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> oh yeah, she's back. We all forgot about Minnie Mogul. You get your two mini moguls. Uh oh, things. get it? Satan reference, because he's got horns. Oh, and she was upside down in the van earlier, and she was doing Christing, and she was in Red Bait Prison. Red, Satan. And now Red Beams. Remember, when, remember when his antlers did the radio? Now they're doing de vegetivized things how, somehow. I don't know how, but they are. Reverse the polarity. Oh, that's reverse, sci fi. Reverse the zombie. Stop shaking and just punch them in the face. Moose is loose. Get them! Oh, Robert De Niro is having the time of his life. I can't believe that he wouldn't do more movies like this in the future. You know, they said he was doing it for the money. You know what he was doing for the money? What? Having the time of his life. Really? Oh. Everyone's having the time of their life on this movie. I, I would really like to find out people who weren't having the time of their life on this movie. And you just like, it's the ultimate plot twist. It would actually be, it would actually be like the guy who plays the president didn't have a fun time. <laughs> That dog doesn't look like he's having the a Nordic great time. <laughs> the Nordic guy. No, no, he's having a fun time. You can tell he's innocent and Nordic. What about... He's got children in his eyes. What about <laughs> Billy Crystal? No, no, it, no, no. Billy Crystal is always having a fun time. No, no. Will's right. It's the kids. The two kids had a rotten time. One of them is the daughter of the director, who, might I add, has gone on to direct really oh, nothing. Oh, in the eyes, yeah. Yeah, no, the only children in the movie. I was trying to think which kids. Like, there's, oh, only, right. there's only them. Well, yeah, that's why I had to think of them. And... He's dead. And my favorite thing is they get uploaded to the internet, yeah? Is that what I, happens I at the end? They just exploded the sky to red, white, and blue. Again, the whole America referencing things. I don't know where that came from in the movie. Like, it just comes out of nowhere. The answer is Like, King when was Rocky and Bullwinkle Heroes of America? That was never set up. But that's why it's brilliant filmmaking, guys. This is a part of the genius of the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. You see, you get here, Bullwinkle could tell them some personal agenda, which he tries to do, but they're like, no, let them vote for anyone. Hey, if they want to vote for Fearless Leader, let them. Well, that's what they say, vote for whoever you want. Yeah, but wouldn't it be a plot twist if they all just voted for Fearless Leader, because that's who they were told to vote for a moment ago, and that's what they technically think, want right now? I think that was a director cameo, by the way. Guy yeah, I think it's the first no. guy who turns the TV on. No, it was, it was me. How funny would it... That was uh, Sorry, not funny. How crazy would it be if, like, one of the people watching TV is like, you're right, I am going to vote for Trump. <gasps> Are you saying he's fearless leader? And then in four years' time, when we watch the movie again, he'll say, you're right, I'm going to vote for... And then he's going to say one of the next presidential candidates. Kanye West, 2020, we know That's this. That's right, Kanye yes. West, yes. I am going to vote for Kanye. Wouldn't it be great when people listen to this in 2022 and Kanye is, like, full president and we're like, ha ha ha, it won't happen. <laughs> Can you imagine the presidential debates between uh, Kanye West and Trump? <laughs> it's like both egos are off the charts. <laughs> The sheer well, size of both their heads will cause a collapse well, and a new black you hole. You said for... ego and size already. I thought we were going to get to like dick measuring at some point, but I guess I'll just. It's hand measuring. Second. Look, he's wearing his Nazi outfit, which makes no sense, really. I don't know. I don't know why. Fush. Fush. Whoa. Look at them. They're fushing. See, and this is good because are they supposed to be Russian or Nazis? They're supposed to be. What's their country called? Potsylvania. Potsylvania. Some sort of Soviet did, satellite did state. The, did, but they look like Nazis. Didn't the, the um, Nazi commies. Didn't the map at the beginning have it next to Europe? No, what, wasn't it like part of Russia was just their country? 
Yeah. Like, they just took a chunk, like, on the right side of Poland. Right, so, so, yeah, so... But they're also clearly Nazis, yeah. I mean, his... Fearless. Specifically, fearless leader's uniform but is Nazi. But also, Boris bad enough, because he's wearing, like, the Boris whole is a, black... He's wearing a trench coat. Yeah, no, he's wearing, not black. Trench coat, but he's, he's wearing black and white. He looks like a... You know, spy a, versus a spy. spy villain. Mm. Guys, do you know... Whose name Boris Badenov is a reference to? Oh, oh, let me get this. Let me get this. Oh, oh, ah, uh, Jerry Seinfeld. No, some Russian king called Boris Goodenov, or maybe Godenov. I don't know. If his name is Goodenov, then the bad. Who at one point had a conflict with the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth? No, we go all the way back to Poland. Fuck oh. you, Boris. <laughs> what the hell was that? I don't even know. So, <laughs> this episode's so gone. You completely <laughs> overshadowed the my the my movie. Rocky impression, saying "fuck you, Boris." <laughs> the movie is nearly over, and we didn't even discuss at any point the plot. Um, <laughs> Will, <laughs> can you discuss what the plot was? Well. Fearless leader and his good henchman friends come out of the oh, bad, bad henchman friends. Bad. Oh, but they'd want me to call them bad, so I will call them good. Oh, they don't oh have... you had one of the aniseed jelly beans, Ryan. Oh, you didn't snap like there were jelly beans? Yeah, there's jelly beans here. Okay, cool. Anyway, the plot here is Fearless leader is putting on, has bought up all the cable and he's putting on this terrible, terrible television that will zombify the entire RBTV. American populace. So that he can... Um, tell them to all vote for him in the next election, and Rocky and Bullwinkle have to stop it. Why? Why them? Why not, Ryan? Because they're, they're movie. Because they're the opposite of them. And she has a pink car. Sexist. So what's the plot, Bartek, from your point of view? The plot, I think that was the plot. The plot is <laughs> no. a road movie journey about a moose, a flying squirrel, I love how charred that is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for pointing out something you pointed out half an hour ago. I think the plot well, I is... I need to interrupt you, Bartek. And I... mine too. I think the plot is about Hollywood trying to capture the innocence and glory of 1964's cartoon series Rocky and Friends. Is it that? Rocky and Friends? Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. No, I think, the it's, show. Just, I think it's just Rocky and Friends. I think that was like the original original. Because Bullwinkle is not his friend. Well, I mean, he's probably one of the friends, and then he got, like... So, it's about Hollywood making a movie, and in that movie, they're making a movie, and they try and enlist the cartoon characters from the movie to make a movie, and then the plot is what Will and Bartek described, and then, at the end of that plot, is them watching a movie that, in real life, Hollywood has made, and then in that Hollywood real life movie is the Hollywood in that movie made a movie that they're watching. Also, the Nordic guy with the beard looks a little bit like Greg Sestero. My god, there was a point in which he actually said something where he was like, Oh no! And I'm like, is this Tommy Wiseau from The Room dressed up as some as, as George Sestero? Greg Sestero. Greg Sestero. I think that this was more Seinfeld, the story Ryan. than the plot, Ryan. Look, we're animated again! Wouldn't you have loved it if the whole movie was animated except for Boris? <laughs> George Costanza can stay. Jason Alexander can stay live action in this completely animated movie. That's gonna be like... Oh, here's the wing flaps now. That's gonna be kind of like... I see the flaps. That They're joke there. that you were making throughout um, Annie, Black Annie, that... Um, Wouldn't it be great if you had a claymation character? No, if there was one character who didn't understand that the world was musical. <laughs> yeah. confused. Wouldn't it be great if you had a character who didn't understand they were in a cartoon world? Yep. So thanks, Des... Des... Mac enough. <laughs> So this was written by someone who also wrote the script for Gangs of New York, the Scorsese classic. And Scorsese worked with De Niro a lot, see? It all ties After in. this movie, De Niro said, hey, you gotta work with Scorsese, I'll give Scorsese a good word for you, I'm fearless leader, but he, he didn't- oh, he's still method acting. <laughs> That's something I don't get, what does that mean? What does that mean? Like, it was it in between takes, he was like, 
staunch chest out, monocle in, going, Well, give me bagels, for I am fearless leader! I think your problem there, Ryan, is that you said between takes. Yeah. I think he's still I, fearless leader to this day. <laughs> no, I meant, like, I'm sure during the takes he's also fearless leader, right? Yeah, but, like, you know, here's the thing I don't get. Why is it that I could do a better Pottsville... What was it? Pottsvania? Pottsvillia? Accent than, Pots than Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro has the worst accent out of all of them. Like, the other two have their accents down pat, and then he is just, like... He doesn't know, he doesn't, one of the greatest actors, he had clearly no idea how to do this accent. He's just like, I shall do accent. Ryan, you've been this whole episode calling him one of the greatest actors this whole time. You just keep saying it over Fun and over fact, again. Fun fact, this movie soundtrack was done by the same person who did Sorority Boys, who's also the singer of Devo, who's also done the music for lots of Nickelodeon classics like The Rugrats. Do you do Cat Dog? No, I don't think so. Well, fuck off. I don't care. <laughs> it should have been Rocco's <laughs> Modern Life. So why you got a problem with me saying one of the greatest actors? Well, you keep saying all these things about how he's not doing things right, so maybe you're just doing Even the yourself. greats, even the greats, even the greats have their faults. Well, what's Jason Alexander's fault? He's just too sexy. He's too hot, Ryan. He's too For hot. my shirt. Hold Gotta on. take it off. Ryan, hold on. Will, is that erection still raging? Yep, it's still going. Then there's no fault. Cappy Von Trapman. Oh, that's a good name. That sounds familiar. It's from well, The Adventures of Rock and Movie. I think, if you've seen... Oh my god, I'm blanking on the name. The I have seen that. The Hills Are Alive. Sound of Music. Von Trapp was the last name of the family. But was it Von mm. Trapman? No. So the movie has ended. There was lots of things that went on the movie that we did not mention because the movie is so crazy. I'm just gonna leap straight into my review and the rating, if that's okay, guys. Hop, skip, I just and jump. Hop, skip, and zig Heil because this movie has everything. It changed me as a young person. Naive I was to the glorious art form that was the Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. You see, this movie has lots of magnificent people involved, from Jason Alexander, who warms my heart with his great performances that he has done throughout his career, such as Jack Black's friend with a tail from Shallow How, and various others that we've mentioned, such as, obviously, George Costanza, and Duckman, Rene Russo, who is a magnetic presence on screen. She has done many great films. Recently, Nightcrawler, I do believe. And, of course, you've got the voice casting, of course, with the narrator, who's also Bullwinkle, I do believe. Um, same guy. And, and the original voice of Rocky as well, which is magnificent. This film is insane, to say in the least. It takes the idea of a cartoon movie... But instead of doing it as a cartoon, let's do it live action. Because if this was a cartoon movie, it would be in the similar vein of those straight-to-video Looney Tunes movies in which they strung together a bunch of Looney Tunes sketches and made a plot out of it, where you can't really fault it. Because it's aware. It is aware of what it is, it's aware of who it's directed to, and it's aware of its source material. It is staunchly faithful to it, whilst also taking a new twist on the idea. Bringing these people to our world. Bringing these people with old values and old jokes, and bringing them into the new century. For new audiences to encounter and appreciate whilst not changing them so much, but allowing them to breathe at the same time. At the end, Rocky and Bullwinkle have changed, but they're not completely different characters to when we first met them. And same with the villains as well. This movie is an astonishing piece of cinema, and it needs to be enjoyed by everyone involved. I am so glad that this movie was made, although I did not enjoy it when I first saw it as a child. Some might say, hey, the movie's made for kids, and if kids didn't enjoy it, then what was the point? The point is, I as a kid didn't enjoy it, but many other kids did, and they're now adults, and they need to revisit this movie and release that inner child experience, because what I needed then was to release the 
adult experience within me because I just couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle its genius. And at the same time, Roger Ebert could. Roger Ebert had the heart of a child in a wooden box that he would eye. poke with with a stick. And this was after his theater experience of nothing but trouble. <laughs> so, my deep, deep thing to say to you is check this movie out again. Watch it with a group. Watch it by yourself. But do check the movie out. It still stands up. Even the animation is still good. The animation is fantastic both in the drawing form and the CGI form. The performances are fantastic and some of the best performances of these people's careers, some might say. A rating, if I had to give it one, it's very hard to give it a rating, but if I could and if I would, I would give the movie a minute and a half long dance sequence out of nowhere. And do you give it that? Indeed, I do. Cool. And this is why I just edit that song in there, and you just hear me go, ooh, ah, dee, dee, ah, and just like pop lock moves. Um, well, let's hear from you, my dear good friend. And mine too. Mine come for you. I greatly enjoyed this film. I feel like I finally understand the 60s. It truly I mean, was the finest Mexican animated product I have seen. <laughs> I give it seven profound erections out of ten. <laughs> yeah, it's a good Finn. bit of globalization outsourcing all the way to the other part of the continent. What about you, Bartek? Lucky last. Lucky me! Oh. <laughs> Will, you made me giggle. And that's my Rocky impression, just to mix it up. That's all, folks. That was <laughs> ah, good luck, Will. Right, what the hell were you football. doing? Alright, look, my review. This movie... You made the comparison to Monkey Bone already, Ryan, but... It's already, it's already hard it's, not to. It's already hard not to. <laughs> like, World Direction. Lots of things are hard. This movie is very crazy. Like, we could call it a live-action cartoon um, in a similar vein to that movie we keep bringing up, but we're never going to do screwballs like <laughs> Monkey Bone and like a lot of other crazy things that we've done. I'm sure there's another movie on this show that we've done that I can compare it to. But this movie, it also does... <clears throat> It also does the thing that we talked about in Bewitched, and I'm sure some other movie as well. I keep saying that. Surf um, Ninjas, I'm sure. No, not Surf Ninjas, because the thing that I'm talking about here is that it is... It's not a remake or anything like that of the show. It's an adaptation where the original work is acknowledged. <laughs> Don't read his notes. Listen to me, you fool. I'm laughing at what you're saying. Are you? Because you're reading his notes. Yeah, I'm, I can multitask. Go on. <laughs> There's important facts in there. Right. Do you know how dangerous it is to hit a moose in your car? People have died. Really? They're big. <laughs> Sorry, I've got, I've got the giggles. I'm thinking about the whole experience that we've just gone through. The fact that I've watched Rocky and Bullwinkle twice within 24 hours and that we just talked about it. Go on. Well, same here, Ryan. But I'm 400 not imaginary pounds of moose. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous stuff. How much is that in kilos? <laughs> Something. Something. Go on. Ooh, Will's a bit tongue-tied. Um, I compared it to Bill Witch in that it's not a... It's, it's an adaptation that acknowledges the original source. And with that comes a level of cleverness not just because you're doing that but because of the way you have to write the movie you have to come up with ways to acknowledge what made the original source great which in this case it wasn't so much referencing things that happened in the show or other characters or things like that it was just focusing on the main characters rock and bull and also the three villains which i'm not sure how prevalent Fearless leader was because I don't remember him that well. I think he wasn't as frequent as Boris. And hence, he's not Natasha. frequent in the movie. Yeah, hence he's not. He's not as notable as Boris and Natasha because even though I'm not that familiar with Rocky and Bullwinkle, the design of Boris is this very stereotypical little, completely black and white, literally man. It's just really cool. Like that's the kind of thing that you could draw. I can't draw because I'm not that good at it, but you could draw on just a book and be like, yeah, that's the character. Um, and, but with writing the jokes, it's coming up with that whole, if this was an earlier episode, if this was our first episode, Big Fat Liar, you would, Ryan, talk about how somebody wrote this and 
We, we I don't even need to bring that up anymore. Yeah, we made the joke earlier in the episode that um, you were going to explain who every single actor was and that, that would take up the whole thing. In a similar way, saying someone wrote this through this movie would take up the whole thing as well because it's, it's that crazy kind of written thing where you're just there and you think, what could be funny here? Someone, Every, someone says something, it's like, that makes no sense, but we'll make it work. You write it down. And that's the kind of comedy that I really appreciate. And the kind of comedy that I think needs to be more prevalent than just telling lame one-liners or jokes or having, you know, lame personalities and try to make that entertaining. And Yeah, we, Hangover. Uh, yeah, and I had a really good segue into something else, but I've completely forgotten what it was now. Oh, no. Um... So I'll just go straight to the rating. I, I won't take up our time trying to think of what it is. Earlier in this movie, we mentioned our favourite character is the helicopter pilot. And he had that whole line about how this, his helicopter got stolen. It was like the third time that week. Yeah. Or third that. time in general. So the rating I want to give this movie is those exact three helicopters <laughs> and more for that man. Thank you, Bartek. Now, we do... Re I read reviews from the IMDb uh, review board. Um, the best way to describe this experience that we go through, especially this week's experience, is it's, it's as if we are looking into another dimension in which everything is topsy-turvy, in which this movie is considered the best, but also what we would consider... Um, well, I was going to say etiquette... And <laughs> our standards of etiquette and what we're willing to share about ourselves is non-existent in this universe. Um, so, so let's get ourselves... Very, very personal reviews? Oh, oh, yeah. We're going some strange places. Nine-star review, straight off the bat. They loved it. 2004, so four years after the movie came out. It's sometimes important to point out the date because... Think of the context. This is years after, so this movie's already been ingrained into the culture. And it has not been ingrained well. So, what I'm going to be reading for you is a 9-star review. Is it me? Or is it Mighty Chili on this board? Is the title. <clears throat> okay. I love this movie to pieces. Each of the four times I saw it in the theater. Apparently, not everyone was privileged to be born in 1955 and spent a childhood marinating in the Cold, in, in the cold War puns and snarky anti-corporate digs of the original TV show. This movie brought it all back. If you had nothing to be brought back to, well, it's your loss. Rene Russo is fabulously snaky as Natasha, and though... Rocket J. Squirrel couldn't improve on the original. That's because he was voiced by the original. The unsinkable... <laughs> Why is that? Okay. The unsinkable June Foray. She's the, no Titanic. The only people who need to apologize for the movie are its promoters, who never figured out how to hook its natural audience for of 40-somethings. I can't wait for the remake of Fractured Fairy Tales. That's... The end of that review. <laughs> they can't wait. So this next one is a 10 star. 2001. IMDB users declare moose and squirrel season. Counter vote! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> was there a dot dot, dot counter before the revolution. Revolution. Was, that? was there a dot 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 before the counter? No. Oh no, it's just semicolon. Semicolon? Oh, Will knows all about semicolons. <laughs> I do. I okay. Do. Let's get into this. <clears throat> As I write this, the weighted rating is 4.4. Ouch! That said, my reason for the counter vote. Although the original show was past my time, the CBS affiliate used to carry it at 6.30am, and I would get up specifically to watch it. So I've seen the show. I think that the movie does a good job in being faithful to itself and its brand of humour. Unfortunately, not everyone sees it that way. The movie is supposed to be irreverent. It's supposed to make fun of everything. General store, foods, and admission are exactly the gags the original had in mind. If it, as some say, lost the road trip part of the movie, there wouldn't be much fun to have with that now, would there? 
It's not exactly biting social commentary, but the idea of television turning people into zombies? Well, it's not a new concept, but R&B takes it <laughs> to a new, to a different level. Rocky and Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle. No, 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 Rhythm and oh, Blues. <laughs> <laughs> the only part that I thought was a bit of a stretch was how Bullwinkle got to New York, but it was still funny. I especially enjoyed the self-referential bit in the courtroom, which I think does its part in quelling some of the critics. It's the rules of pulling cartoon characters into real life, only in this case, the movie makes its own rules. It may not be the best movie ever, and it may make De Niro a mockery of himself, but a 4.4? Come on, people! It's not that low! Maybe those who liked it in their comments didn't vote. I don't know. Ordinarily, I'd give it my standard 7, but it's just screaming for her, me to help it in any way that I can. <laughs> <laughs> and what rating did you give it? A 10. Oh, good. Oh, he helped it. This one is another 10 star. From 2001. <clears throat> Pleasantly surprised. I heard nothing but bad reviews on this movie, but the trailers I saw in theatre intrigued me nonetheless. My wife was not interested, maybe because I'm 50 and she's 40. <laughs> maybe because I'm 50 and she's 40. I didn't even know what age she was, I loved what it was going. <laughs> I'm 50, she's 40, and she missed it the first time around, so it had no nostalgia value for her. When it came out on video, I wanted to rent it, and I'm glad I did. What a treat. Really. This Y2K edition brought back a lot of great childhood memories of, of two of my favourite cartoon characters, Rocky and Bullwinkle, and the bumbling good guys. And the bumbling good guys. The voices of R and B are exactly as I remember them, and the attitude <laughs> The attitude of the whole project is as silly and off the wall as the original series on TV. The special effects and characterizations were a joy, and between crin cringing and laughing, this was a very pleasant experience, not to mention a great piece of escapism. Get a bag of popcorn and forget the last 35 years and enjoy. Don't miss the song played over the closing credits. It's a delightful piece of nostalgia called Through the Eyes of a Child. If that doesn't take you back after seeing this romp, you just may not have a heart or a memory. Wasn't the song during the South Park movie credits also called Through the Eyes of a Child? <laughs> Probably. But is it this next 10 star review from 2006 just entitled Awesome? <laughs> is that all caps? No, it's just got an exclamation mark. Okay, I'm just really enough. excited. This review may contain spoilers, so prepare yourself, guys. Whoa. Possible spoilers alert, so, whoa. you know, whoa. It's okay, I've seen the movie. <clears throat> I haven't. I love this movie, and I watched it with... I watched this with my friends. They loved it, too. My mum watched it, too, and she loved it. It was so funny. It's just not right. It's not right, what are you talking about? They wrecked our car, they were going to kill us. Rocky's right, Karen. <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> Sorry. Bad news, I'm losing it. Okay. Oh. I want to hear the rest, so... Hey, Rocky's right, Karen. And two rides don't make a wrong. That's not what you mean. You mean two rides do make a wrong? They kept the characters to the way they were on television, but put them in a whole new environment. And you know how Bullwinkle is. He tries to help, but it doesn't always work. He thinks the whole movie is about trees and frostbite falls. The trees are now all stumps. But the plot is not like that at all. We didn't and that's the end of the review. Man, we didn't talk about that at all. No, we don't need to. <laughs> also, was, were they quoting the movie? Yeah. <laughs> were they quotation marks? No. Because <laughs> I'm like, You just crazy have to something? know. That's the spoiler. I, for I forgot <laughs> Sympathy's first name. So The yeah. next one is... A one, two, three, four, five, six star review, an average review, but for a great movie, watchable, but it wouldn't be without De Niro and uh, Perabo. We're we gonna call her. Is that her name? I her name was Jerry. Jerry. Thank you. 
P E R A B O. I'm gonna go Parabo. Piper Parabo. We're gonna go Parabo, guys. So if you want to correct me, which you won't, so have fun with that. This is from 2002, so two years after. <clears throat> Seven, eight, uh, six star review. I have this rather odd habit of collecting Robert De Niro movies. I have a pretty respectable amount of M already. After all, he is one of the most ingenious, gifted, and charismatic actors of our, of our time. Oh, it's your review, right? Yeah, of our time. He's I great... saw The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle in the store, and I was quite suspicious about it at first. But since De Niro's name was printed all over it, I finally said to myself, What the heck? Let's buy the damn thing. <laughs> like, at first they said heck, and then they were just like, Fuck it, let's say damn. Uh, yeah, I like how his name is just up there in the corner. Yeah, bit. um, well, let's buy the damn thing. Well, generally speaking, this movie wasn't very good, and it definitely wasn't my kind of flick at all, just as I thought. But it had its moments here and there. This is at least one of De Niro's weirdest performance. Our man of Scorsese films actually plays a cartoon character. The fact that he also produced this film is too crazy. His famous you're talking to me line from the classic Taxi Driver was, however, a nice touch and one of the most amusing individual details. The most outstanding surprise of the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle was the enchanting Piper Perabo, who is, in my opinion, the cutest, the loveliest, and the most charming and beautiful actress around. I mean, she's a girl I could eat alive. I was in love the minute I saw her in Coyote Ugly, and I've decided that if I'm ever going to have a child, I want her to be the mother of my baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> all... I was gonna name it by <laughs> so all in all, the film wasn't anything special, but I loved all the scenes with De Niro and Perabo. The last one is my personal favorite review. It has no star ratings, and it is in all caps. And it's from 2002, and the it just thing? says no, just the title. Oh. The title is. And this person's from Egypt. We've had great reviews from Egypt in the past. Yeah. Mm. Wow! <laughs> That's it. With like four exclamation marks. So I should do it right. Wow! I think I think now it's an I think now it's nice to see Robert De Niro is playing with fun. Especially after Sarah especially after Scarface and Stanley and Iris. He's in neither of those. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. I'm sorry, Bartek. Oh, I spat in Bartek's face from pure laughter. And that so is that is that the first spit that's actually been on air? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, you're right. And it was on my face. <laughs> it's been coming for 40 episodes, Bartek. He's in neither of those movies. Yeah, I was about to say, he wasn't in Scarface. Okay, especially after Scarface and Stanley and Iris. Here, here is looks the best he has because he is cool with an eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> so can you read that again? I was still getting up the spit. Buddy. No. Here he is looks the best. <laughs> here he is looks the best because he because he is cool with an eye patch, which he also oh, doesn't eye have. Patch. Which he does which he doesn't have. Oh, and, an iPad. and plays a great bad man. Bullwinkle, <laughs> oh god, and plays a great bad man. Bullwinkle the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Bullwinkle the dog is great for CGI. He is funny and makes me laugh. I like this. The other guys, too, are too good, and it would be nice to see a sequel. If Al Pacino was De Niro's sidekick, imagine good, good fun. I recommend it. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and the best part is Al Pacino is in those movies he just listed before. <laughs> so I was about to say again, Scarface. <laughs> My God, this this episode had everything from Will's great impersonations to those reviews to me spitting in Bartek's face literally, not figuratively. He, he spat. I spat, I saw it, I saw it happening and I could have stopped it, but I said no, no, no. He spat Bartek, in the child Bartek, of his eye. Yep, I think Bartek really deserved it, don't you? For that review? Well, at least I got an erection. He got an erection out of it. So, we finally come to the end of the show. Is there any last points of issues you want to talk about about this fantastic film? Um, 
when they were driving through that same town like three times, weren't there some funny names there that we didn't bring up? Did you find any good names in there, Will? I didn't see it, but on the internet movie database, in the trivia section, it says out of the back of the truck at one point, you can see a sign for Boob Mart. My favourite So if Mart. you're ever gonna watch the film again, which you obviously will, mm. keep an eye out for Boob Mart. <laughs> no, you will. Yeah, oh. oh. Ah, well. You guys, as always, have been fantastic, amazing listening people. And I think we've been amazing hosts. You know, Will is an amazing guest, as usual. I mean, he's practically a host. I mean, you know, we're all hosts, technically. Of, of all the guests we have on, he's the only one with, like, the inside knowledge of what Yeah, we're I mean, planning. Will was there in the 60s. Will is Boris. If you said to me, Will's actually one of the characters in the animated TV show, that's why he dimly has a memory of it, because he, he doesn't like to remember the sad times of it getting cancelled... I'd believe you. He was there when your parents gave birth to you. And he was my dad. And he was like, one day he will have Shoal and I will be Is on. Is that his Pottsylvillian accent or that's, that's it transitioning to the Australian one he has now. Oh, that's his accent? Will, is that your accent? Yes. Oh, he, he said yes. Hey, you, you nailed it there. Whenever Will says yes, he 100% means it. Also, I have one more point. Go on. I can see, Ryan, you have a lot of pictures of Danny DeVito on your wall. I always have lots of pictures of Danny DeVito on my wall. And at one point, he was going to play Boris in this film, but it didn't work out. What do you think of that, guys? I think it would have been great if he played Boris... Bad enough. Bad enough. I think it would have been great. And I think the only person who could play Natasha is his real-life partner, Rhea Perlman, <laughs> who is, um the uh, bartender from Cheers and I think they would have been a great comedy duo and their leader is just Schwarzenegger mm. so it can be recaptured the glory of twins and Bullwinkle can be voiced by Billy Crystal is twins gonna be on the show one day no, it's too, it's too much of a cinematic classic, of course. Too okay. mainstream. I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't know. So, as always, you guys have been fantastic. I hope you enjoy the show. We enjoyed it. We always enjoy it. You know, Bartek's still wiping the spit from his eye. Will's still perfecting his vocal talents for impersonating Bullwinkle. And obviously, I'm working hard on trying to wrap this up. You guys should always listen to us because we are vain self-centered people who keep looking at who isn't listening to us and we note them down in a little black book isn't that right we got your ip addresses we got your ip addresses we know where you are um you guys have been fantastic do please share the show around you know if you know someone who would be a fan of it make them listen and listen yourself obviously yeah. I mean, if you got to this point, I would hope you've listened. Don't listen to it together, because that only counts as one listen. So, you guys, <laughs> please leave us uh, a comment or review, you know, to help us out. You know, if you want us to do a movie, you have to tell us, because, hey, we may have never done Rocky and Bullwinkle. We may have never done Monkey Bone. We may have never done this, 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 and this. So, please do help us out, because... We may never do a movie that you know would be perfect for the show. You guys can listen to it together, I was just joking. But listen to it twice together. Once, twice. Twice will be good. Three times is great, too. Yeah. But until next time, guys, remember to be kind to each other. And to sign you all off, all three of us are going to do one impression each of a character from this movie. Ryan, do you want to go first? Yes, I think I'm going to be the helicopter pilot. Okay. It is me, helicopter pilot! Get out of my helicopter, you crazy kids! What are you doing up there? This is the third helicopter this week! Okay, I'll do Rocky. Yeah, sorry, you can go that way, y'all are fine! And Will, now you do a voice. Who are you gonna Mamma do? Mamma mia! <laughs> it is the end of Spit and Polish! <laughs> Who was that? Just this show. No, 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 just this episode, not the show. The show's fine. That was- those were the guys! The, the Italian guys, Ryan! <laughs> that was a spot-on impersonation. Come on! He actually did it! <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> he tried. I did Rocky from Rocky. You, Will, and you, the audience, and us two here, we all get a gold star for trying. 
I get a gold belt because I won the boxing ring. Yeah.